Hey everyone, I'm Marcus Ng, and today I'll teach you how to build a quiz app with Riverpod and Flutter hooks that fetches data from an API. Users are presented with a question with four possible answers from a random quiz. If the correct answer is chosen, then a green border and green checkmark icon appear around the answer. If the incorrect answer is chosen, then a red border and red X icon appear around the selected answer. The correct answer to the question is also revealed. The next question button moves users to the next question. When users finish their quiz, they can view their quiz results. Tapping on New Quiz will load up a new quiz for our users. If you enjoy the video, remember to leave a like and subscribe, and check out the full write-up and source code at launchclub.io, linked in the description below. And with that, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create a new Flutter project called Flutter River Pod Quiz. Inside of our pubspec.yaml file, let's add the necessary dependencies. DO is for sending HTTP requests and allows us to fetch data from the quiz API. Enum to string lets us convert enum values to strings. Equatable makes it super easy to compare objects in Dart. For state management, we're using hooks river pod, which means we also need to have Flutter hooks. HTML character entities is for decoding the HTML character entities that are sometimes present in the strings returned from the API. And meta is for Dart annotations. The API we're retrieving quizzes from is the Open Trivia Database. Let's go to the API, generate a URL by choosing the number of questions, category, difficulty, and type, and then click Generate API URL. Notice how this endpoint doesn't require an API key. When we go to the generated URL, we get back a JSON that has a response code and a results list. We want to focus on an individual quiz question in this results list in order to create our question model schema. In a new folder called models, let's add a file called questionmodel.dart. Question model contains a class question that extends equatable. If we look at the JSON, all of the values are strings except for incorrect answers, which is a list of strings. Let's parse the question information we want. Category, difficulty, question, correct answer, and all answers. Now answers is going to be a list of strings containing the correct answer and the incorrect answers. Let's generate our constructor and make all of these parameters at required. Add our equatable props so we're able to compare question objects with one another. And lastly, we'll add a factory constructor called from map that takes in map string dynamic. If map is null, then return null. But if it's not null, then we can return a question. By referencing the JSON blob, we're able to easily create the question because we know what data the API gives us. Answers is a shuffled list of all the possible answers. The double question mark is a null aware operator that makes sure if the expression on the left evaluates the null, we assign an empty string or empty list depending on the situation. This is so we prevent calling any methods on null, which would result in an error. And now we're all done with our question model. Now make a new folder called repositories with a quiz folder. Here we'll make two files, base quiz repository and quiz repository. Base quiz repository is an abstract class that contains the signatures of any methods quiz repository needs to implement. Since this quiz app is a simple example, we only need to have one method called getQuestions. GetQuestions returns a future list of questions and takes in three parameters, the number of questions, the category ID, and a difficulty enum. The number of questions is how many questions we want the API request to return. The category ID is the integer ID of a category defined by Open Trivia Database. We can view all the different categories and their corresponding IDs by going to the API documentation and going to the category lookup endpoint. At the moment, there's 24 different categories with IDs ranging from 9 to 32 inclusive. The difficulty enum is for defining question difficulty. We'll make this enum in an enums folder in a file called difficulty.dart. The enum has four values, any, easy, medium, and hard. Inside quiz repository, we have a quiz repository that extends base quiz repository. Quiz repository has a dependency on reader from Riverpod. 
Reader allows the quiz repository to read other providers in the app. We're going to use this to access our DO provider to make HTTP requests. We'll define our DO provider at the top of this file. Next, we can implement get questions. In a try catch block, we should define the query parameters of our get request. Type is multiple, so we only get multiple choice questions. Amount is the number of questions. And category ID is the category ID. We only want to pass in difficulty as a query parameter if it's not equal to any. We can make the request to the API by accessing our DO provider with read and passing in the endpoint with the query parameters. If the response is successful, we can convert the response.data to mapstring dynamic, grab the list of results, and then return the list of questions. If the request was not successful, or the results list is empty, we return an empty list. For our catch block, we're going to handle DO errors and socket exceptions. We're going to throw our own model called failure, which we'll define in our models folder. Failure is a class that contains a string message. To access this quiz repository anywhere in the app, we should declare quiz repository provider, providing our quiz repository and passing in ref.read as the reader. Let's create a folder called controllers that has a folder called quiz. Inside, we'll make two files, quiz state and quiz controller. The UI will interact with the quiz controller to modify our quiz state. Based on the quiz state, our UI will react accordingly and render the appropriate widgets. If you're familiar with Block, this is very similar to using a qubit, where the quiz controller is our qubit. We can break down the UI of our app to figure out what values our quiz state needs and how our quiz controller should modify the quiz state. This screen has four different scenarios. The user has not chosen an answer. The user has selected a correct answer. The user has selected an incorrect answer. And the user has completed the quiz. We'll keep track of this with an enumeration called quiz status. To know which answer the user selects, we need a string that stores the selected answer. And finally, we need to remember which questions the user gets right and wrong so we can show the results at the end of the quiz. In our app, we just show the number of correct questions, but we're going to keep track of both correct and incorrect answers in case you want to expand on the project and show the actual questions to the user. I added a getter named answered, which returns a boolean based on if the quiz status is currently incorrect or correct. This will clean up our UI code, as we'll have to check for this a couple of times. Quiz state has a factory constructor called initial that returns a default state when the quiz is first loaded. And remember to add a copy with method to easily modify values in quiz state. Let's move on to our quiz controller. Quiz controller extends a state notifier with type quiz state, and the super constructor returns the initial quiz state. We have three methods to modify our quiz state. First is submit answer for when a user taps on an answer. We check if the current state is answered and return to prevent users from submitting answers multiple times. Our state is modified using copy with, based on if the answer is correct or incorrect. Next is next question, for when a user taps the next question or see results button. The selected answer is set back to an empty string, and the status is updated depending on if we're at the last question or not. Last is reset, for resetting the quiz when the user taps on new quiz. At the top of this file, let's provide this quiz controller to our app, using a state notifier provider. Tacking on auto-dispose will make sure the state of our provider is destroyed when it's no longer used. This would be more beneficial if we had an app with navigation between multiple screens, but I'll leave this in anyway. We're finally ready to start working on the UI of our app. I'll be creating all of the UI inside of main.dart, but feel free to refactor each widget into its own file for better organization. I'm going to remove the counterexample and import all of the necessary files and packages. To access any provider in our app, we have to wrap our material app with provider scope. We'll set debug show checked mode banner to false, the primary swatch to yellow, and the background of any bottom sheet to transparent. Home is set to quiz screen, which we'll add right now. Quiz screen is a hook widget with a gradient background and scaffold. To fetch questions using our quiz repository, we can make a future provider that returns a list of questions by calling our getQuestions method. 
We use ref.watch to access our quiz repository provider instead of ref.read because we want our quiz repository to give us new questions whenever we refresh this provider. As I mentioned before, there are currently 24 different categories with IDs ranging from 9 to 32 inclusive, so we can generate a random category using random.nextint. And we'll set the difficulty to any. We can now get this provider by doing use provider quiz questions provider. We'll also create a page controller with Flutter hooks so we can programmatically animate our page view to the next page. The body of our scaffold calls .when on our quiz questions provider to build different UI when our future has data, is loading, or has an error. When our future has data, we call build body and pass in context, page controller, and the return questions. For loading, we return a centered circular progress indicator. And for error, we return a quiz error that checks if the error is of type failure and returns the error message. Let's write our quiz error underneath this widget. It's a centered column with a text widget and custom button we use throughout the app. When the user taps on this button, we refresh our quiz repository provider to make the API call again. Custom button takes in a string title and void callback on tap. It's a styled container with a gesture detector and text widget. We'll define the box shadow above, as we're going to also use it for our answer card and circular icon widgets. Back in our quiz screen, we need to add a bottom sheet. We use maybe when because we only want to show a widget when we have a list of questions from the API. We display the custom button only after a question is answered and move to the next page in our page view when we're not at the last question in our list. We still have to write our build body method. If no questions are found, we return a quiz error. If the current quiz status is complete, then we return quiz results. Otherwise, we return our quiz questions. Quiz results displays the number of questions the user got correct and has a custom button to start a new quiz. We also have to remember to reset our quiz controller state. Quiz questions takes in the page controller, quiz state, and questions list to display each question to our users. It returns a page view builder with the physics set to never scrollable physics to disable users from scrolling. Using the index to grab each question, we display the question number in a text widget with the actual question underneath. Since some strings have encoded HTML character entities, we can decode them with the HTML character entities package. Let's add a divider and a column with children mapped to a list of answer cards. The on tap calls our quiz controller's submit answer method, passing in the question and selected answer. Answer card has a string answer, booleans is selected, is correct, is displaying answer, and void callback on tap. The build method is a gesture detector with a child container. The decoration has our box shadow we defined earlier and only displays a border if we are currently displaying the correct answer. Because we only want to display a red border around the answer a user selects, we also include an is selected check. The container's child is a row widget with a flexible text answer and a circular icon that only displays after submitting an answer. Circular icon takes in icon data and color. It returns a circle container with a box shadow and white icon. All right, we're now all done with our Flutter RiverPod quiz app. Remember to leave a like, subscribe, and check out my website, launchclub.io, for more Flutter courses and video write-ups. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.